Okay, good evening and welcome everybody. I'm David Wood from the Pacific Science Center and I'm gonna be your host for our first ever virtual happy hour trivia night. Um, we've never done this before and certainly not in a format like this. Um, so fingers crossed uh, that everything goes smoothly. Let us know in the comments section if you're enjoying the quiz and if everything's working okay for you. We really appreciate you getting super nerdy with us for a little bit of science trivia tonight. I hope everyone's enjoying a beverage and that you're looking forward to going head to head with your friends and your family and your community tonight. Please download the free Kahoot app, like right now, go to your app store, download the free Kahoot app, that's K-A-H-O-O-T with an exclamation mark. Um, download that free Kahoot app now on your smartphone or your tablet so that you can play along with all of us tonight. Um, once you open the app, once you've downloaded the app and you open it, you'll see an enter pin section, which is going to be a small multicolored square at the bottom of your uh, at the bottom of your phone screen. Select that and enter our game pin, which is three zero one four one three six. Don't worry if you didn't catch that because we're going to be posting the game pin in the YouTube comment section. Again, download that free Kahoot app now on your smartphone and tablet and enter the pin 3014136 so you can play along with everybody else. Remember, once you've downloaded the app uh, to keep this YouTube live stream open. So if you're watching this on your laptop or if you're watching this on your smart TV or whatever device you're watching this live stream, this YouTube live stream on, um, keep this open and then you will play along by selecting answers on your phone or your tablet. So again, download the free Kahoot app now if you've not done so already. Uh, and once you have that on your phone or your tablet, that's how you're gonna select tonight's multiple choice answers and then keep this YouTube live stream open on uh, your laptop or your TV. Once you've entered the pin and you've joined along with everyone else, you will get given a random screen name. They're always something silly like jumping rabbit or uh, fluffy dragon or something weird like that. If you don't like your name, you can spin and you'll be assigned a new one. We've got a total of 30 questions for, for you tonight. So the quiz is gonna be broken down into five rounds um, with six questions per round for a total of 30 questions. The first round is gonna be a this week in science round. Obviously today is Monday, so it's gonna be news and stories that are in the news cycle as it relates to science from this past week. The second round is gonna be a general science round, which will be all over the place. We've got a picture round. Our fourth round is a PAXI round, which is gonna be a shameless plug for PAXI events and programs and initiatives. So all of the questions in that PAXI round are gonna be related to upcoming Science in the City talks. And then we're gonna round things off. Our final round is a weird science round where we're gonna get a little bit loose with the definition of science. There may be a little bit of sci-fi in there, a little bit of gross science or weird science. So that's how we're gonna end things today by getting a little bit weird. You'll have 30 seconds to answer each question and points are awarded based on the speed with which you answer the question correctly. Um, so it's not just a matter of getting the question right, you will get more points if you answer the question correctly and if you answer it quickly. And we will see everybody's scores after each question are gonna pop up. Um, so we'll get some real time feedback, which is very cool. Some of tonight's questions have been submitted by local scientists and STEM professionals who are members of PAXI's Science Communication Fellowship Program. And those questions that have been submitted by Science Communication Fellows are gonna be worth double points. Don't worry, I will let you know when we have a science communication fellow question and your ears can prick up and get ready for that one because all of our science communication fellows, so questions submitted by real local working scientists will be worth double points. Uh, the scientists who have submitted questions are Emily Norton, who's a research scientist at the University of Washington's Joint, in Joint Institute for the Study of the Atmosphere and Ocean. Elizabeth Crummy, who's a grad student at the University of Washington and Seattle Children's Research Institute, where she's, a, where she's in the graduate program in neuroscience and the Center for Integrative Brain Research. 
And our final scientist questions come from Melissa McEwen, who's a grad student at the University of Washington in the Department of Pharmacology. There are no big, crazy prizes on the line for tonight. However, the winner is obviously gonna have bragging rights. You get the respect of your peers um, and you will also get a shout out on Paxi's Instagram account. So if you're today's winner, take a, uh, a screenshot of your phone or your tablet and DM that, direct message that to Paxi's Instagram account, which is at Paxi. And we're gonna give you a shout out so everyone in our community can sing your praises. Before we start tonight's trivia event, I'd like to share a few bits of information with you first. And again, make sure you're downloading the Kahoot app and make sure that you are entering the game pin. Trivia is brought to you in part thanks to the incredible support of First Tech Federal Credit Union. We'd like to thank them for helping us to ensure that Curiosity never closes. And so I'd like to introduce you to Ingrid Van Veen, who's the account manager at First Tech Federal Credit Union. Hello there, Ingrid. Hi, David. Thank you, Hi. David. You're welcome. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I hope you're excited for tonight's game. First Tech Federal Credit Union is proud to support Pexi and this virtual trivia night. For the people who don't know who First Tech is, I would like to take a minute to explain who we are and what we do. We are a non-for-profit organization that invests in our members and offer banking solutions for every stage of life. We are committed to invest in our community and support the next generation of leaders, thinkers, and innovators. We support education, research, and innovation. To give you a few examples, focus areas for education are STEM, reading and writing for elementary school kids, and financial education. Focus areas for research is support health service for the children in our community, and focus areas for innovation are food, shelter, and safety. If you would like to learn more about who we are and what we do, please feel free to go to our website, www.firsttechfed.com. And now, David, I think we are almost ready for trivia. I wish you all good luck and a great night. Thank you. No, thank you so much, Ingrid. And, and thank you, First Tech Federal Credit Union, for all the work you do in our community and all the work you do to support access to science education here in Seattle and beyond. Um, First Tech Federal Credit Union are also um, going to be donating a pair of camping mugs uh, to give away in a free drawing. So we will randomly be choosing a name from everybody who's registered for today's event. And don't worry, we'll email the winner and we will send you those camping mugs courtesy of First Tech Federal Credit Union. Educational programming like this is also made possible in part thanks to the generous support of our donors. In the face of challenges like COVID-19 and climate change, science and an informed public are absolutely essential. So if you're able to, and as part of tonight's event, we suggest a $10 donation to help us ensure that Curiosity never closes. For more information about donating to the Pacific Science Center, visit paxi.org forward slash support. Um, we also wanna thank all of Paxi's members who are tuning in tonight. If you're not already a member, I personally recommend our Fusion membership, which is designed specifically for adults. And if you get that Fusion membership, then perks include free admission to IMAX documentaries, laser shows, and Science in the City talks. Obviously, our laser shows are world-class, and I'm partial to our Science in the City talks. We've got passes to 21 plus events like Happy Hours and Brewology. We look forward to being able to host these events in person and have a drink with all of you in person when we, when we can and when it's safe to do so. Discounts at our gift shop and our cafe. And then, of course, Memberships also support Paxi's mission to expand access to science education in Seattle and beyond. And that goes for every membership option that we have. Uh, so to become a member, please visit paxi.org forward slash membership. So really quickly, I want to remind everyone, if you haven't done so already, to download the free Kahoot app on your smartphone or your tablet, enter the pin 3014136, and you can see that commented in the YouTube comment section. Keep your laptop or your smart TV open with this feed and then play along with all of us on your phone. And you can see that code listed there. All right, I think I've done enough talking. 
I think we've set the stage. I hope you're as excited about doing some science trivia as I am and we are at the Pacific Science Center. So it looks like we've had 40 players, 42 players join us. Oh, we're getting more and more. Power Goose has just joined, Smart Macar. We've got some great names going on here. Hero Dingo. Good, we've got some more people joining. Wise Octopus. We've got an octopus question in store for you tonight. Mountain Zebra, we're up to 50 players. Okay, keep them coming in. Looks like we've still got a few people joining us. And so um, we'll wait. Looks like Polite Pelican has joined. Welcome, Polite Pelican. <laughs> So remember, if you haven't done so already, download the free Kahoot app from your app store and um, enter the game pin, which is listed here as 3014136, so you can play along. Keep this video up somewhere so that you can see the questions, and then you'll be using your phone or your tablet, um, whatever device you'll be using to play along at the same time. We're getting more and more people. Welcome Purple Crab, Arctic Dog. Oh, great names. Smiling Falcon, Power Duck. There's definitely, uh, definitely a lot of adjectives and <laughs> proper nouns and some animal names. Majestic Wolf, welcome. We'll give everyone a little bit longer here to, to join us. Um, so like I've said, we've got 30 questions. We're gonna have five rounds with six questions each. These questions are all gonna be multiple choice. Um, we've got a number of different themes for each round, a Paxi round, uh, we've got a weird science round, this week in, in science round. It looks like we're starting to plateau. We've got 66 players. I think we can go ahead and start. All right, hopefully everybody's ready. Welcome. Three, two, one, who's ready for trivia? <laughs> <laughs> Round one is going to be this week in science, like I said. So we'll be exploring uh, things that are in the news from this past week. So question one, we're going to start off with the big news event of the week. This past week, NASA and SpaceX successfully launched American astronaut, uh, astronauts from US soil for the first time in almost a decade. What are the names of the two astronauts? So we're looking for the name of the two astronauts that were launched thanks to a collaboration between SpaceX and NASA. Nice and easy here, was it Leland and Christopher, Buzz and Neil, Christine and Jessica, or Bob and Doug? So use your phone or your tablet to answer those questions. We've got about 66 people playing along. Is it Leland and Christopher, Buzz and Neil, Christine and Jessica, or Bob and Doug? Get those questions in. It was, of course, Bob and Doug. A few people asking Buzz and Neil. There's a little bit past their time, I'm afraid, especially for Neil. Fearless Tiger in the lead, got that one right away. So Fearless Tiger, you are in first place as things stand. So question two of round one. This past week, the deepest ever sighting of an octopus was made by cameras on the Indian Ocean floor. What species of octopus was it? So this past week, cameras picked up the, the deepest ever sighting of an octopus on the Indian Ocean floor. What species was it? Was it a Dumbo octopus, a giant Pacific octopus, an Atlantic pygmy octopus, or a mimic octopus? So select those answers now on your pad. And the quicker you get those answers in, as long as you get them correct, the, the quicker, the more points you will get, sorry. It was a Dumbo octopus. If you've not seen a Dumbo octopus, they have these incredible, what look like ears sticking out a little bit like Dumbo uh, that they can use to navigate at those deep depths. They're very cute looking little octopuses down there. So let's go on to our next question. Fearless Tiger, oh no. Awesome Llama, first place by, by Country Mile. All right, question three of round one. This past week, 
The US surpassed the grim milestone of 100,000 confirmed COVID-19 related deaths. Roughly what percentage of the global total does this represent? And of course, we're talking about confirmed deaths here. So what percentage of the global total are US confirmed COVID-19 related? Is it 10%, 20%, 30% or 40%? And, and bear in mind, this is a rough estimate. So round to the nearest percentage. What percent of global deaths are US? Get those answers in. It's 30%. I think it's slightly under 30%, but it's very close to 30% of the global total are US confirmed. Expert Bison is, is taken into first place. All right. Next question uh, to lighten things up a little bit. That was a heavy one but it's what's happening. Arizona State University has a canine science collaboratory and they recently published a study. Now, given the choice between food and rescuing their human, most pet dogs chose what? Given the choice between a, a treat and rescuing their human, what did the majority of dogs choose? Did they choose the food or did they choose the human to rescue their human or to eat the food? There are a total of 60 pet dogs in the study at Arizona State University's Canine Sciences Collaboratory. They didn't all choose the same thing. But six, five, six seconds left to get those answers in. Did, they, did the majority of dogs choose the food or the humans? Yeah, most of you got that one right. Well done. They chose the humans. 19 of the 60 dogs chose the food but we won't hold that against them because the majority of dogs as long as they knew how to were able to uh to choose helping their human instead well done to power goose who's now in the lead question five this is a local one this past week seattle seahawks quarterback russell wilson delivered a ted talk and you should check it out what sports psychology technique did Wilson promote during his talk? It was the subject of Wilson's TED talk. What sports psychology technique did he promote? Was it goal setting, repeating keywords, neutral thinking, or visualization? Russell Wilson delivered a TED talk. What sports psychology technique did he promote? And I've actually seen Russell Wilson play baseball in North Carolina before he went pro in, in football, which he's much better at. Is it goal setting, keywords, neutral thinking, or visualization? Oh, we, we didn't like that question. It was neutral thinking, which um, is being touted by a lot of psychologists um, in a number of arenas, and, and Russell Wilson's been applying it um, to his NFL career. Awesome, Lama, you're back in first, well done. Let's go on to our next question. Question six, the last, the last uh, question of the This Week in Science round. So this summer, millions of periodical cicadas will be emerging across Southwest Virginia, parts of North Carolina and West Virginia. The brood emerging this summer spent how long underground? Again, these are periodical cicadas that are gonna emerge in the in millions, how long has this brood spent underground? Three years, seven years, 11 years, or 17 years? So the larva have spent a, a significant amount of time underground and it's periodical as you can tell from the name. This cicada brood, how long have they spent underground? three, seven, 11, or 17 years. That's right, it's 17 years. Certain species come out in 13 years, some come out in 17 years, but uh, this current brood in, in the Eastern United States 
will have spent 17 years underground until they emerge and they will be loud. All right, so we are moving on to our second round, which is gonna be a general science round. So this won't just be what's been in the news this past week, this is gonna be all sorts of areas of general science. Our first question is, what is the name of the Mars 2020 rover? So what's the official name that NASA have given the Mars 2020 rover? We're looking forward to that launch later this summer. Is it Perseverance, Rover McRover Face, Tenacity, or Explorer? Is it Perseverance, Rover McRover Face, channeling a little bit of Boaty McBoat Face there, Tenacity, or Explorer? What have NASA chosen? Obviously, it has been a while since we've sent a rover up to the Martian surface. What's the official name that's been given that was chosen by an elementary school boy? Well done, you've been paying attention. It was Perseverance. They're all very similar names. Well done, Awesome Lum has still got quite a lead. Question two of round two. This is a science communication fellow submitted question. So it's gonna be worth double points. That's right, double points. So listen up for this one. Which of the following is one of the main components of your immune system? So which of these organs is one of the main components of the immune system? Is it the stomach, the skin, the spleen, or the liver? Which of these organs helps with our immune system? Stomach, skin, spleen, or liver? Get those answers in as soon as you can. I wish it was as easy as just blocking out <laughs> contagions with your hand like that. Make things a lot easier at the moment. <laughs> it is the spleen. Well done to those of you who got it right, all 24 of you, well done. Next question is, oh, awesome llama. You're not slipping, well done, you are awesome. Question three, what is the name of the first known interstellar object detected passing through our solar system? So this is the first known, the first observed or recorded um, object detected passing through our solar system. So it came from outside our solar system and left our solar system. Is it the Hawaiian for log? Is it Mauna Kea, which means white mountain? Epikema, which is science, or Oumuamua, meaning scout? I won't repeat those because it will take me too long. But what is the name of the first known interstellar object detected passing through our solar system? Get those answers in. It is D, that's right, the green, <laughs> what is that? What shape is that? Square, Oumuamua, meaning scout. Well done to those of you who got that one correct. Most of you did. Awesome Llama still well in the lead, well done. Question four, and again, this is another science communication fellow submitted question, so the points are double. Where is the deepest part of the ocean? Where is the deepest part of the ocean? Points are doubled. Is it the Galathea depth in the Philippine Trench? The Horizon Deep in the Tonga Trench? The Challenger Deep in the Marianas Trench? Or the Meteor Deep? in the South Sandwich Trench. The South Sandwich Islands, the Tonga Trench, the Philippine Trench, or the Marianas Trench. What is the deepest part of our ocean? It was, of course, well done. The overwhelming majority of you got that right. It's, of course, the Challenger Deep in the Marianas Trench. And thank you to our science communication fellow for submitting that to us. Awesome Llama, well in the lead, well done. Okay, question five, another one submitted by a science communication fellows. Double the points, what neurotransmitter is involved in reward prediction, which helps your brain make decisions? So which neurotransmitter is involved with reward prediction, which helps your brain make decisions? 
Is it histamine, adrenaline, norepherine, or dopamine? Which of these options, which neurotransmitter is involved in reward prediction, which helps your brain to make decisions? Again, double the points and thank you to our science communication fellows, our local scientists and experts and STEM professionals um, who have committed themselves to public science communication for sending in those questions direct from our local scientists. It was, of course, dopamine. Well done. Let's see how we're doing. Awesome Lama, well in the lead. Expert Bison in second place, though, could maybe catch up. We'll see. Question six, the final one of this round, who is widely credited with creating the first computer program? So who is widely credited with creating the first computer program? Is it Ada Lovelace, Charles Babbage, Alan Turing, or Mary Somerville? Who's widely credited with creating that first computer program? I know there are a lot of computer programmers out there in Seattle. Ada Lovelace, Charles Babbage, Alan Turing, or Mary Somerville? That's right, well done. A lot of you getting that one right. 26 of you, it was Lady Ada Lovelace. Well done to Ada Lovelace, well done to all of you. All right, we're gonna move on to the next round. So this third round is gonna be a picture round. So you'll see the image first when I read the question, and then when we're answering, you'll also see the image again there. So take a good look at the pictures for this picture round. So the first question, is what species of mantis shrimp is this? So quickly take a good look at this picture of a mantis shrimp and we'll see it again later. What species of mantis shrimp is this? You'll get to see the image again, so don't worry when you're answering. Is it a zebra mantis shrimp, or as I would say a zebra mantis shrimp, a peacock mantis shrimp, a smith's mantis shrimp, or a chameleon mantis shrimp? Zebra, peacock, smith's, or chameleon, which species of mantis shrimp is this. Mantis shrimp obviously known for their incredible punching abilities and their, their wide field of vision in terms of seeing different colors. This is a peacock mantis shrimp. Answer's pretty scattered there. Uh, so well done for those of you who got it. Awesome llama, you just keep sweeping up, well done. Next. Next picture question, question two of this round. What is this an image of? Obviously this was international news, one of the biggest news stories of the year when it, when it came out. What is that an image of? Take a good look at it when it comes back. Is it a supermassive black hole, a ring-tailed lemur cornea, a hydrogen atom, or a hooded rat cortical neuron? A supermassive black hole, Ring-tailed lemur cornea, hydrogen atom, or a hooded rat cortical neuron. What is this an image of? This blurry orange image in a in a with a black background. Let's see how we did. Oh, I'm so relieved. Well done. 60 of you, 60 of the 63 of you got that one correct. It is, of course, a supermassive black hole. Well done to all of you for getting that one correct. We've got two llamas in the top five, which is great. We've also got an echidna up there. Question three, and again, this is another one from our science communication fellows. What is this an image of? What is this an image of? Take a good look. We'll see it again here in a second. What was that an image of? And our picture round. And this is double points. Lizard skin, baby mushrooms or, baby, or mushroom spores. Carrot seeds or salmon roe? What is this an image of? Lizard skin, baby mushrooms, carrot seeds or salmon roe? Get those in. This is another nice and easy one. What is this an image of? Lizard skin, baby mushrooms, carrot seeds or salmon roe? Looks like most of us have got answers in. It was of course, D, Salmon Row, you all got that one correct. Well done to everybody at home. Next question. 
Question four, this is the first image of what? Very famous image. What is this the first image of? Is it a diatom, a plant cell, a magnetic field, or DNA? What is this an image of? A diatom, a plant cell, DNA, or a magnetic field? The first ever image. What is this? blurred image of why is it so important it was of course the first image of the structure of dna with the double helix thank you to rosalind franklin for that awesome llama still in the lead Question five, this is a view from the world's tallest building. Obviously it's at night. What is its name? So what is the name of the world's tallest building? And this is the view that you would have if you were looking out at night. Is it Shanghai Tower? Is it Burj Khalifa, the Maca Clock Tower or the Entisar Tower? What is the tallest building in the world, and this is the view, is it the Shanghai Tower, the Burj Khalifa, the Maca Clock Tower, or the Entisar Tower? Which one is it? What's the world's tallest building? We've got a lot of superlatives today. The tallest building in the world, a little engineering question. It is the Burj Khalifa, well done to those of you who got that right. Awesome, Lama, I think you might be at 100%. We might need to make some tougher questions for you. This is another science communication fellow question. This is another simple one. The phenomenon, this phenomenon associated with warming ocean temperatures is known as what? So this ties to Paxi's commitment to climate change education. This phenomenon associated with warming ocean temperatures is known as what? Is it ocean fading, coral bleaching, sea blanching, or reef peroxide? What is this known? What are we looking at in this image here? Ocean fading, coral bleaching, sea blanching, or reef peroxide? It's obviously vitally important that we have healthy oceans to support life on Earth. What, what is this an image of? Fading, blanching, bleaching, or peroxide? Well done, the vast majority of you getting that one right. It was, of course, coral bleaching. Well done, everybody, and well done to Awesome Llama. Expert Bison getting a lot right, though, in second place. Well done. We're going to have a brief five-minute intermission. So we will come back at, at 6.40 p.m., let's just say. Um, so go ahead, grab a beer. Um, if you're playing along with someone, uh, maybe talk a little bit of smack. Let them know that you are better than they are at Science Trivia. Um, but get yourself a drink, use the bathroom, and we will be back at 6.40. Uh, we'll be back in five minutes. So we will see everyone here again soon.
Okay, welcome back, everybody. I hope everyone's had the chance to do what they need to do for five minutes, maybe get another beverage. Hope everyone's well lubricated at home. So uh, we're going to be moving on now to our next round, uh, which is going to be a Paxi round. Uh, we've got some great upcoming Science in the City talks for you. Um, we've got uh, topics on Murder Hornets, as you can see here, that one's going to be tomorrow in a talk called 2020 Strikes Again, Murder Hornets, where we're going to be joined by Dr. Chris Looney, who's an entomologist at the Washington State Department of Agriculture. Obviously, I believe last Thursday we had the first confirmed um, sighting of a murder hornet in Washington State of 2020, and so that's very timely. So tomorrow at 7 p.m., Tuesday, June the 2nd, we'll be joined by Dr. Chris Looney for that. We've also got topics on North Pacific right whales and animal behavior coming up for you. So a lot of these questions coming up are gonna be related to those upcoming Science in the City talks. So our first question of round four, our Paxi round, what is the common name for murder hornets? Murder hornets is more of a nickname. What's the common name? We're not looking for the scientific name, but what is the common name for murder hornets? Is it the Asian giant hornet, the yellow-legged hornet, the yellow-striped hornet, or the big no-no hornet? What's the common name for murder hornets, the Asian giant hornet, the yellow-legged hornet, the yellow-striped hornet, or the big no-no hornet? Get those answers in as soon as you can. It looks like everyone's back with us, that's good. We've got 64 answers in a few seconds now was of course well done the asian giant hornet this invasive species in the pacific northwest and we found one here in washington state confirmed last week got a few llamas in the top three well done to llamas question two super sniffing canines help the study of north pacific right whales by tracking down whale scat so dogs with a great sense of smell or sniff out whale scat in the Pacific Ocean and try and find North Pacific right whales that way. Which of the following do conservation biologists not measure when they're studying North Pacific right whale scat samples? So we're looking for what do conservation biologists not measure when they're studying whale scat samples? Is it fertility, parasitism, stress levels, or bone density? So using those, this looks like it's a humpback whale in the photo, but um, what do conservation biologists not study? What information do they not get when they're studying those scat samples? Fertility, parasitism, stress levels, or bone density? Get those answers in soon. We've just got three or four seconds left here. The answer is bone density. So they do study parasitism, fertility, and stress levels from those scat samples with the help of their super sniffer dogs. We will be joined by Dr. Giles and her super sniffing dog that tracks down right whale scat. And that's going to be on Tuesday, June the 16th. So join us for that science in the city. Well done, awesome llama. Expert bison catching up though, good job. Got a hold on about a 900 point lead there. Okay. Our next question. So, question three of the Paxi round. It's another murder hornet question. On average, how many people do murder hornets kill per year in Japan? So, in Japan, where murder hornets are native, how many people on average per year uh, do murder hornets kill? And as we've established, they are the Asian giant hornet. Three to five people a year. 30 to 50 people per year, 300 to 500 people per year, or 3,000 to 5,000 people per, head, per year. So murder hornets or the Asian giant hornet, how many people per year do they kill on average in Japan where they are a native species and have bees that can, that can, um, that can handle them? Three to five years, 30 to 50, 300 to 500, or 3,000 to 5,000 people per year. It was the second option, 30 to 50 people per year in Japan that die from murder hornet stings, that venomous stings, those vespids. So our next question, well done, awesome llama, still in first place. Question four, this sounds like a trick question. Can coyotes swim? 
Can coyotes swim? This is going to be yes or no. Fingers at the buzzers. Can coyotes swim? Yes or no? Is this a bluff? Is this a double bluff? Can coyotes swim? Yes or no? Get those answers in as soon as you can. For more points, can they swim? 10 seconds left in our Paxi round. Tune into Science in the City, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. right here on our YouTube channel. Yes, they can. Most of you got that one right. Uh, they've even been spotted um, going across the Panama Canal. They're on their march south towards Colombia and South America, where I believe they'll have to compete with jaguars. So that'll be quite interesting, but I wouldn't bet against coyotes by any means. Next question. Question five, how did right whales, we're back to right whales, how did right whales get their name? The number of subspecies of right whales, how did right whales get their name? Their right pectoral fin is longer, they can only turn right, they're the right whales to hunt, or they were discovered by Sir Henry T. Wright. How did right whales get their name? Because of their right pectoral fin, because they can only turn right, because they're the right whales to hunt, or they were discovered by Sir Henry T. Wright. Get those answers in. A few seconds left. It is because they were considered the right whales to hunt, and that's why their numbers are so low currently, among other reasons. Um, they could float when they've been harpooned. Um, they were they would they would pretty um, pretty precocious whales, and they would swim close to the surface. So by whalers, they were considered the right whales to hunt. Well done, awesome llama. Still there in first place. Question six, what is the scientific name for a coyote? What is the scientific name for a coyote? We've got a few options for you here. Is it Canis latrans, Canis lupus, Canis aureus, or Canis canis? What's the scientific name for a coyote? Canis latrans, Canis lupus, Canis aureus, or Canis canis? Get those answers in as soon as you can. We're looking for the scientific name or the Latin name, not the common name, obviously. What is it? A few seconds left, get those answers in. It is Canis latrans. A lot of you saying Canis lupus there, that's a wolf. Canis canis doesn't exist. And Canis aureus is a different species of canid. So well done, everybody. Well done for getting those three players of reached an answer streak of three. So well done to those of you who've been getting a few right in a row. We're moving on to our final round here of our first ever PAXI trivia event that's been done online like this. It's a weird science round. So the questions may be sci-fi related, weird or grosser areas of science. So that's how we're gonna finish off today's first event. What is the national animal of Scotland. This looks like an ancient castle in the Highlands. What is the national animal of Scotland? Is it the Scottish wildcat, the Highland cow, a dragon or a unicorn? Which of these is the national animal of Scotland? The Scottish wildcat, the Highland cow, a dragon or a unicorn? Get those answers in. What do you think it might be? The endangered Scottish wildcat, the enigmatic Highland cow, a dragon or a unicorn. Well done to those of you who said unicorn, you got it right. I've got my UK passport here and if you can see that you'll notice that we proudly have a unicorn on all of our passports um, and that is because it's the national animal of Scotland. So well done to the majority of you getting that one right, 30 of you getting that one. Green Echidna, well done. You've moved up to second place and you have an answer streak of 18. Remarkable, well done. 
Shout out to monotremes everywhere. So uh, question two, what is, oh sorry, who is the science officer? Again, we're going with sci-fi here, not strictly in the world of science. Who is the science officer of the USS Enterprise in Star Trek, the original series? Remember that's STTNG, sorry, not STTNG. We are going with Star Trek, the original series. Apologies, Trekkies out there. Is it Spock, Dr. Leonard Bones, McCoy, Montgomery, Scotty Scott, or is it Ahura? Spock, McCoy, Scott, or Ahura? Who is the science officer of the USS Enterprise in Star Trek, the original series? So this is not Picard. This is earlier. Who is the science officer? Spock, McCoy, Scott, or Ahura? It was Spock. We must have a lot of Trekkies tuning in. Well done. He wears many hats. Well done, Awesome Llama and Green Echidna. Question three. It's another one. Can snakes blink? Not sure what species of snake we're looking at here, but what? Can snakes blink? Yes or no? Get those answers in as quickly as possible. Can they blink? Yes or no? Can snakes blink, yes or no? About five seconds left. Most of you have gotten an answer in, can they blink? <laughs> they cannot. Wow, 50-50 split there. We're divided on whether or not snakes can blink. Uh, snakes lack eyelids, unlike their lizard cousins who do have eyelids. Snakes don't lack, they lack eyelids, so they cannot blink. They do have an eye cap, however, that they shed. So nosology, question four. Nosology is the study of what? This is an ology question. Nosology, nasology is the study of what? Feces, mollusks, pollen, or taxidermy? Nosology is the study of what? Feces, mollusks, pollen, or taxidermy? What do you think this is the study of? Nasology. Feces, mollusks, pollen, or taxidermy? A book on top of a laptop for this image. Oh, a lot of you were bamboozled by pollen, thinking it was maybe nasals. It is, in fact, the study of taxidermy. We're getting a little bit weird in this round. So let's see how everyone's done. Excited puffin, three in a row. Well done. Question five is going to be which of these animals does not exist? So three of these animals will exist. Obviously, that cute pug in the picture does exist. But which of these... Which of these animals does not exist? Is it an eye eye, a dick dick, a pim pim, or a matter matter? Which of these four animals does not exist? Three of them are going to be real, very real animals, but one of them does not exist. Is it an eye eye, a dick dick, a pim pim, or a matter matter? Get those answers in quickly. It was the yellow option, a pim pim. Matter matters, obviously, very interesting looking turtles. Eye eyes are a kind of species of small monkeys with giant eyes and a long finger. Pim pim was the, was the correct answer because it doesn't exist. We made it up. Okay, next question. Only a few questions left here. Question six. So, oh, this is our final question of trivia. So who invented dynamite is this final question of our weird science round. Who invented dynamite? Is it Alfred Nobel, Robert Bunsen, Alessandro Volta, or Napoleon Dynamite? Who invented dynamite? Napoleon Dynamite, Alessandro Volta, Robert Bunsen, or Alfred Nobel? Get those answers in as soon as you can if you see the right answer. Select that and get more points. And this is our final question of the event. Ooh, 
Well done. Of course, the majority of you getting that right. Alfred Nobel, obviously famed uh, namesake of the Nobel Peace Prize, was the original inventor of dynamite using gunpowder and a number of other things. So here we're, we're excited to announce our podium. I think we all know who the winner might be. In third place was expert Bison, well done. Second place, Green Echidna. And in first place, pretty much leading from start to finish, 61 out of 65 questions correct. Blimey, well done. Awesome Llama. Who do we have as runners up there? Oh, it's gone away. Well, Awesome Llama in first place. Well done. Thank you everyone for playing Kahoot. Awesome Llama. Um, if you would take a screenshot uh, that you have won, you send us that and uh, DM us on our Instagram account and we will make sure that you get recognized for your achievement. Thank you everybody who has been playing from home. We hope you've had as much fun doing this as we have. Uh, I'd like to thank our sponsor once again, that's First Tech Federal Credit Union. Um, remember that you can also support programming like this by donating to the Pacific Science Center. And for more information about that, visit paxi.org forward slash support. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's event. Look out for an email with a survey. Um, tomorrow we'll be sending that. We would really appreciate your feedback. Let us know what you thought. Did it go smoothly? Was the app working for you? What did you think of the questions? Um, anything, we would love to get that feedback from you. So look out for your emails um, tomorrow. Uh, for any members who are tuning in tonight and who are going to be joining us for the exclusive post trivia event, please find the Zoom link in Zoom link in your email or on your e-ticket, and we'll take a quick five-minute break and we will see you all on that Zoom channel there. So, members who are joining us for the the member exclusive event after this event. We will see you in about five minute time. So, once again, thank you everybody who played at home. We really hope you've enjoyed this and thank you for connecting with us. We hope you're all staying happy and safe during these times. And so we look forward to connecting with you again soon. So bye for now and thank you for playing. <laughs>